All right, Pointing Nation, how many of you guys, after you finished your painting, you let it dry for a few days, you let it cure for your few weeks, and you go to do the varnish or top coat, and you completely ruin it? I've done it a ton of times. I either get really heavy brush marks on it, or I get splotchiness where some of it got covered and some of it didn't, or I get little cracks that happen in it because my medium is too, or my varnish is too thick or not thick enough. I've done this so many times. So today I'm gonna to show you an easy way with what you see here to varnish your paintings and do it less expensive than some, some other ways and still get a good finish without needing to be super precise and without all the worry and hassle. So we're going to put a varnish on these four pieces of art that I have. I did these in the last couple of months. This is an open cut pour with a black base, open cut pour with a white base. This is my flip cup tutorial video. And this is my subtle cloud cells without satin enamel. So if you wanna look at any of those videos, I'll link them down below. But essentially, what we want to do is to bring out these color and get a little bit more shine. Some of these have doled down because I used a satin pouring medium in this one. I used glue uh, for this one. I used Floetrol for these, which is notoriously dull, and I wanna kinda of bring those colors out. And I wanna put a protective layer on so that I don't have dust and, and all those kind of things affecting these paintings later. So the first thing we need to do is clean our paintings. Now, generally, if it's just been like these two, they don't have any oil in them, so I'm just gonna lightly um, just make sure I don't have any dust on them, and I might do a little bit of water with a paper towel, but that's really all these need. These two, however, have silicone. So there's lots of ways to get rid of silicone. It doesn't have a lot of silicone, so today I'm just gonna use a little bit of Windex and a paper towel and clean them off a few times, and that should get the majority of the silicone off. For this method, having a little bit of silicone won't hurt. If you were doing something like resin, you wanna make sure every piece of silicone's off or else that finish, the resin finish won't work. Now you don't wanna wash these too much um, as, and you will get a little color coming off. That is the color that's trapped in the silicone. If this were glue, if you rub glue too much, it's gonna come off. So this is, was Floetrol, so you, I don't have that problem as much, but you gotta be careful that you don't over clean and pull your paint or your pouring medium off of the canvas. So I think that will be good here. And just for good measure, I'm gonna bit of Windex to clean those ones off. All right. So next, what we're gonna do is I have a t-shirt that I had washed a bunch of times and started getting holes. And so I cut a bunch of strips out of this t-shirt. Now, uh, a really high cotton blend t-shirt, unless it's really old, could have uh, lint in it, which is what we want to keep up. This is a, a cotton poly blend and it is pretty old so a lot of that stuff has already come out in the wash. So I just cut it up into pieces and I'm going to use that to put my varnish on. I just cut them up into hand size pieces. Well, my hand size pieces, a little bit bigger. This is probably uh, four or five inches by ten inches or so. The next thing that you need is I'm using Liquitex Gloss Varnish. Now, I like this. It is a little bit expensive, but I'll show you how I kind of make it go as far as I can. And it gives a really good finish. That's why I like it here. I try and get these on sale by the bigger, th bigger containers so I can save as much money as I can. But this will last me quite a few paintings. I mean, I'm, I'm about halfway done and I've probably done 30, 30 uh, sm smaller, 16 by 20 or, or smaller paintings. Uh, bigger paintings obviously will use more. 
But essentially what I'm gonna do is, I, in a separate bottle, I put 50% water and 50% of the gloss varnish from Liquitex. Now, this on it, I will tell you up front, specifically says, don't mix with water. However, in the application that we're doing here, it seems to work great and I have never had any problems with it. So that is one caveat that I will put on this method. And you'll see why I don't think it matters in just a minute. And I've mixed this 50-50 in, in a bottle and really all I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my painting well, in this case, I'm just gonna dip this in because normally I would put this in a little cup, but then I just dip this in my, my thing and I make sure I get a nice even coat. Now you have to make sure you have enough. If you don't have enough, it will dry too fast and it will um, start to kind of bind up your That's it. And I'm just gonna do this. The same for each one of these. It's nice circle motions to get the paint in the same place. I like to lift these up so I don't have to touch the sides. And make sure it evens out. Let it dry. Now I will do this probably three or four coats, an hour or two in between coats. Depends on how shiny I want the final result to be. And if I know I'm gonna be coming back to this, I just take my rag that has the stuff on it, put it in a plastic bag, get as much of the air out as I can, close it up and then I'll use it in another two hours. So we'll come back to these. I'll show you how it looks and we'll put another coat on. All right, so it's been a couple hours with the first coat. I wanna show you something. The first coat is not the best coat. Um, you can see kind of the, the places where I got a little more stuff than the other, which is just fine. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna do the exact same thing except for when we straighten it out, we're gonna straighten it out the opposite way. And I'll probably do four coats on these paintings. Now some of them look great just with one coat. You can't, don't even notice anything. Um, this one, because it was the first one, I think it wasn't, it didn't have stuff everywhere and that's why it kind of made some of those um, lines that you see there. So let's do coat number two. So that started to get tacky while I was doing it. So that tells me that I did not have enough liquid. So I'm just gonna get a little bit more. You only have a minute or two to do this. Um, if I would have waited any longer, I would have um, left it and fixed it during the next coat. If you're doing bigger canvases, you just wanna do the same thing for a smaller area first, and then just keep moving forward. If you miss something, just leave it. Keep moving forward and fix it on the next coat, just like I said with these smaller ones. So we're starting on our third coat and I'm going to start with this painting and go backwards just to make sure that I'm not doing this one the first every time and that I get the leftovers on the last one which usually gets a little bit more 
of the varnish than the first one does. So before we do an up close of the final result, if this video was helpful to you, please like the video. That tells YouTube that other acrylic pour artists may be benefited by watching this video. And also, if you're interested in our weekly videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you get notified the next time the videos come out. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. It's only been about half hour, 45 minutes since the last coat. So I'm not gonna touch the top there. But even, even now, I mean, even if I touch the side, it's dry. But you can see that's a nice even coat. There's no marks like this one had the, the uneven surface first, but that all goes away as I do more and more of the layers of paint. Now each one of these has a nice, beautiful coat. It's not too thick. Kind of helps bring these colors out. Even the ones that had the um, silicone have a nice coat on them. So again, I water it down so it doesn't dry as quickly and so that I can get very thin coats on. I do have to do more coats that way, but I think it works way better and I don't get any uh, of the lines that I've gotten from the foam brushes or from a regular traditional brush. And so again, this is one of many methods. You can put all of the different varnishes, the gloss, satin, flat, uh, high gloss, all of those can go on the same way. And it's a quick and easy way to again, keep from getting lines and things on your art. So for you guys that are still here, what varnish do you prefer to use with your acrylic pouring? I've also done a couple of videos on how to use polycrylic, which I will put a link in the video here. Otherwise, happy pouring and we'll see you next week, Pouring Nation.